been waiting almost two and a half years for this day. The wait is over for the family of Isabella Thallis. Today, the man who killed her with a stolen gun was found guilty of murdering Thallis and seriously injuring her boyfriend. The jury only needed a few hours to come to a verdict. Nine News reporter Luis De Leon shows us the moments after Thallis's parents heard the news. For nearly two and a half years, her death did not go down in vain. The family of Isabella Thallis waited. It's not a victory of who won today. There's so many losses all the way around the board. In incurable pain felt by Thallis's family. Our family obviously lost, Bella's friends lost, the community lost. Isabella Thallis was shot and killed by Michael Close in Denver's ballpark neighborhood in June of 2020. Thallis's boyfriend was seriously hurt still physically recovering to this day. All over an argument about the couple's dog going to the bathroom on the street outside of Close's apartment. It was later found that the gun used to kill Thallis was an AK-47 style rifle that Close stole from a Denver police officer, Sergeant Dan Politica. In a trial that lasted all but two days, jury deliberations for less than one day, Michael Close was found guilty of all charges, including first degree murder. And there's purpose behind this pain somewhere. Pain that has this day bringing mixed emotion. A sense of relief, but nothing in this world can, can cure the unquenchable pain of a slaughtered child. So during the trial, prosecutors called Close's actions that day a rage-motivated mission for respect. Close's defense did not dispute the facts of the case, but argued that Close should have been found not guilty by reason of insanity. They say Close suffered from an untreated mental illness. Sentencing for Close is scheduled for November 4th. He'll face life in prison without the possibility of parole. And we know both of her parents will be there at that sentencing yeah. as well as they have been all along the way. Yeah. Yep. Just a touch of closure today. Luis, thank you. The only Planned Parenthood in Steboat Springs closed abruptly last week. It was also an island of care in a post Roe v. Wade landscape. The Steamboat Springs location was one of a few abortion care providers in Northwest Colorado and the closest to Salt Lake City, Provo and Ogden in Utah, all cities with over 50,000 people in a state where an abortion ban trigger law is only temporarily blocked by a restraining order. Even as the closest clinic Steamboat was still about 335 miles from Salt Lake, Planned Parenthood of the Rockies told us the clinic served fewer than 500 patients a year and was already operating on limited hours before it closed. They said their decision was based on going where that need was the greatest. Planned Parenthood of the Rockies said staffing challenges, fewer patient visits and an aging population were all factors in closing the Steamboat Clinic. They're providing patients referrals to other local providers for in-person visits and patients can still access Planned Parenthood services through telehealth. Community advocates say Aurora's selection of finalists for police chief is a massive step back for the city. The leaders of Colorado's most diverse city picked three white men as finalists for the police chief job. The city says 21 people applied for the job to replace former chief Vanessa Wilson after she was fired. A third of the candidates were women or people of color. The recruiting firm that helped vet candidates say it recommended seven people to the city, though they didn't share the demographics of that particular group. A city panel narrowed it down to three people, all white men. One of the finalists dropped out just a couple of hours later, leaving Scott Ebner and veteran and deputy superintendent for New Jersey State Police and David Franklin, chief of staff at Albuquerque PD. Jason McBride is on Aurora's Community Police Task Force he, that was created after the death of Elijah McLean. He says the finalists show him Aurora is back to square one after years of work to improve policing there. I just felt like we have wasted two or three years of, of trying to build that, that department back up uh, from when Elijah McLean uh, was, was murdered to uh, you know, through through George Floyd and everything that we dealt with um, to now, uh, nothing has changed. 
The city manager, deputy city managers, and the interim chief were all on that panel that considered the applicants. The city says its management chose the most qualified finalists from the group that applied. The recruitment firm found that found and vetted the candidates say that they're just seeing fewer applicants for chief jobs all around, all across the country. It's reflective of what the candidate pool is in today's day and age, and the fact that there are issues in Aurora that some people are not willing to take on. I mean, you do have, you you did have, um, you're in a consent decree, uh, and that takes a special skill set and that, that may have scared some candidates away. Now, perhaps somebody else could be added back into the mix. The city says with one finalist dropping out, they will revisit some of their semifinalists. People in Aurora can submit online questions for the candidates. The city's also holding a meet and greet next Tuesday night. A 16 year old suspect in a double shooting on East Colfax earlier this month is being charged as an adult. 16 year old Jaleen Mitchell is facing numerous charges, including two counts of attempted murder. He's accused of shooting two people near East High School September 7th. 14 year old boy was shot in the face. The other victim shot multiple times. Both are recovering from their injuries. Another 16 year old boy was initially arrested, but charges have yet to be filed, according to the DA. Two parents facing murder charges. In January, a grand jury indicted Alonzo Montoya and Nicole Cassius on new charges today. Both were originally charged with child abuse, resulting in death. The DA says the two took part in a drug trafficking ring before, during, and after their daughter died, and that they regularly manufactured and distributed drugs in front of their children. An autopsy showed that two-year-old little girl had meth and fentanyl in her system when she died. The amount of fentanyl was 10 times the amount of fentanyl necessary to kill an adult. Both parents are in custody tonight. A trial date for the two has not been set. While the world awaits the opening of one of Denver's most iconic restaurants, we've been talking about this one a lot now. The world is awaiting this. <laughs> right? The At this world. Point, that's how it feels. Mm -hmm. uh, the employees have been busy. Casa Bonita's new owners have paid for all employees to undergo Spanish or English classes. And they hope this breaks down language barriers when the place does finally open. Here's Jeremy Hajola. As the beloved Mexican themed universe known as Casa Bonita undergoes massive multi-million dollar renovations, <laughs> just down the street, employees have been undergoing their own improvements. So it's not cold when you jump in? No, there's been times where it was cold, but it's, <laughs> it's a heated pool. Like diver Bo Gentry, he's among 29 Casa Bonita employees who had Spanish and English classes covered by the restaurant's new owners. Tell me about that, digame. Yeah, hey, orale. Yeah. <laughs> it's been an awesome experience, man. 26 weeks. Owners Trey Parker and Matt Stone, the creators of South Park, hired executive chef Dana Rodriguez to make big changes, not only to the food, but to the workplace. And you build a really good culture in the restaurant. Employees were awarded for completing the weeks long program. Gracias, amigo. Yeah. So I had to test the diver. Como se dice Black Bart's cave in Espanol? Um. <laughs> Negro Bart Cueva? <laughs> Alex Perez spent 30 years working at Casa Bonita and took English classes. We use, uh, uh, how do you use the verb, uh, present, past, mm -hmm. future. Speaking of the future, the new head chef is feeling a bit nervous about reopening an iconic restaurant. How are you sleeping at night? trying to get everything done that you need to get done. I drink a lot of tequila before I go to bed. Uh, no. Casa Bonita has always had this reputation for having horrible food for, for, for decades. And people will not argue with me on, on, that, on that fact. You are going to be changing the food there. Can you give us any sort of hint on what's going to happen? You know, we're going to make food real. That's a big word, you know, like we're going to create everything in house. Sounds good, right? Espero que sí. Jeremy Hohola, 9 News. <laughs> it's always a good place to start. Uh, Rodriguez couldn't exactly say when this restaurant will open. Casa Bonita. A lot of renovations still going on. You notice they still have a diver, though. No opening date yet. The skies above Buckley Space Air Force Base turning into a combat zone. What they're training for. Next.